Welcome back. Today we're here to talk about 2015's Fan Four Stick, or Fantastic Four, whatever you want to call it. Listen, I was unprepared for how horrible this movie was going to be. It was the first time watching it. I heard nothing but bad things about it. But I did not, even after hearing all that, I did not prepare myself for just how bad I was going to find this movie. So let's just kick it off with the plot and story. And the fact of the matter is, they didn't really have one that was cohesive. So first of all, they start off by digging like way into origins. So like, <laughs> like, like Reed deep. Richards is in third grade origins. And so is Ben, although Ben is just kind of a side character in this one. He doesn't yeah, really have anything to do. For no reason. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, so like they're both in third grade and then they're at a science fair when they're older. And then eventually they get promoted into like this science club where they're trying to build a portal to another dimension and all that you know if they continued with that could have been okay probably but the thing is they didn't stay with that they like they did this thing where they make the portal of another dimension and then they get infected with some green ooze that gives them superpowers inexplicably and then it stops and then it jumps like five years into the future. How many years into the future? Uh, like several. Like, several, yeah. No, because he's graduating high school, so like ten years. Yeah, it was like ten years into the future. And it skips the whole origin of like how they learn to use their powers, where the powers are, all these things. So like the origin story, if you're going to watch an origin movie, the things that you actually care about from an origin movie... You don't get. ...get skipped. And you get a bunch of other origins like... Oh, did you know that Johnny Storm is a really big race car guy? Yeah, he's been just and, racing. And it's like, I didn't, but I don't think yeah, I care. Yeah. So, and then they jump forward, and then they're already super-powered beings who've been working for the government for a long time. And then they, but, like, Reed Richards has disappeared because he was scared of being part of that. And yeah. then... They find him, and then they build a portal, and then it just rushes this finale that makes no sense, then it's over. Yeah. So, really, the story is not cohesive at all. No, the pacing in this movie is all over the place. Because, like, you start in third grade for whatever reason, right? And that's fine. And then the power goes out, and then they're like, oh, now they're in high school. And, like, look, I don't need to see them growing up, but I also didn't need to see them in third grade. No. Okay? Now, your understanding is that for, like, ten years, Ben has been working with Reed Richards on this project, right? <laughs> right. And then at some random high school science fair, uh, was it Sue Storm? That, like, her dad comes Yeah, in her, like, and, NASA dad or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and big time. Reed Richards, but not Ben. Ben <laughs> has been here the whole time. And, and, and so she's like, yeah, no, we want, we want Reed for sure. And Ben's like, okay, I guess I'll go, I guess I'll go away. disappear off camera for the yeah. rest of the movie. And, and so, and then they fast forward to him being there and then they start working, right? And you get a brief introduction to Victor Von Doom, who like arguably is one of the more interesting characters in the Fantastic Four story. Right, line, yeah. But not in this movie. No. Not, we'll get to there in the, in the, in the characters, but... I mean, you get a brief introduction there, and then they get teleported to this planet, and then they get teleported back. All except for Victor Von Doom. Who except for dies Victor for... Von Doom, who falls into the gl the green liquid. Yeah, and and then you're like, I don't know, three five years later, and and for, they have the worst CGI I've ever seen with Reed Richards trying to hide his face. Oh, that was really bad. And, and like the only thing that I wanted to see as far as origin stories was the thing being a military weapon. And you don't get to see no. it. That's the only cool thing that they did, and they didn't no. even show it. Well, and the villain of the movie was dead for yeah. all of it, really. Until, like, Yeah, until it, the final fight, which comes out of nowhere. Yeah, it comes out of nowhere. And it makes no sense, because we find out... So he's brought back to planet Earth, because they find out he's alive, and they're trying to help him. And then he's like, no, I just want to go back to my planet. It's my new home now. Yeah, and they say no for some reason. And they say no, and they refuse to let him go, so he starts killing them. And then, I don't even remember, somehow the planet start colliding or something, and they have to stop that from happening. But yeah, like, because they left the portal open too long. Dude, just leave him there. He was happy. He was happy there, but he's also dying, because when they found him, he's like almost dead. So it doesn't really make sense there either. Listen, I gave the plot and story a one, <laughs> and that's generous. I probably should have given it less than that. I yeah. think the only reason I gave it a one, I don't know why I gave it a one, but I'm going to stand by it because I did. There's nothing yeah. about it that works. Listen, I gave it a point five because it almost, 
it almost made a conflict between Richard and uh, Reed Richards and Ben, the thing. Last, That's right. It almost did. It do almost that. did that. It almost made there. It almost made a conflict there, but they gave up on it so fast. Yeah. They were like, if they have hard feelings in this movie, then in the next fifteen movies. We have to come back to that. So instead, let's make this a trailer for a movie that's never going to happen. It was so bad. It was really it was so bad. bad. I, one last thing I did want to mention is I remember because every time they were going to do a time jump, it literally faded out and then came back in. This is kind of a cinematic thing, but I remember turning to Ben at one point and being like, they almost, it almost looks like they did this so we could have commercial breaks. Yeah, right. Really? Like, it felt like it was a TV show. And it probably should have been the way that it was structured. No, can you imagine having to watch more than an hour of that? I mean, no, it would have been terrible, yeah. but, like, I don't know what they were doing. I think that if you're going to make a TV show out of that movie, at least maybe show us at least one full episode of the thing going ham in, in military war zones. Oh, for sure. But yeah. listen, they, they had maybe two good ideas in this whole movie, and they dedicated no time to them. Yeah. Literally no time. Terrible. Terrible storytelling. Terrible plot. The acting in this movie was uh, pretty bad for the most part. I I gave one... Uh, so, I think that Michael B. Jordan did a good job. And I think that Michael B. Jordan's dad did a good job. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the acting was, like, okay at the very best. For the most part, it was just kind of forgettable. But the characters were atrocious. Mm -hmm. they, like, unforgivable. Like... Okay, so as an example, Reed Richards is the smartest man in the universe. And, and that's how he's known... In, in Marvel Comics. But you have Reed Richards, and then apparently he's not as smart as Victor Von Doom. Now, I'm okay with that to an extent. I mean, it kind of takes away the one thing that Reed Richards has going for him. But in doing that, they they also ruined Victor Von Doom's character uh, by making him... I, I don't really know what they did to him, to be honest. It kind of felt like he was omnipotent, but like not entirely. Like He could pop people's heads by thinking about it, unless they were a main character. And then right. he couldn't do that anymore. And then he could like fly at certain points, but not at others. And I, I don't, I don't know what his powers were, and and I don't know how much it matters. But what I can tell you is that he was a jerk, and then he was gone. <laughs> yeah. And then he didn't have a personality anymore. And then like I don't know, Johnny Storm didn't really exist. Like, he was there to an extent, but he was just kind of like a handyman <laughs> for some reason. And then he went, and just kind of a bad influence, I guess. And, and his acting was good, but other than that, it was, like, just not a great character. And then Sue Storm was, like, the most forgettable. Uh, but Ben? The man had, like, the screen time where you would have been like, oh, he should be a main character. But they treated him like he was in the background the mm, whole time. Yeah. Like, he, he, they talk about him. But he's not there. But he's not there, and he barely has any lines. And that actor actually could have been okay. Yeah. That's the one thing I actually did want to bring up, because I wasn't a huge fan of either of the other fan, the original Fantastic Four movies either, but I will say that one thing I felt like they did right was the characterizations of those of those characters. Characterizations. Yeah, yeah. Portrayals of those characters. Um, ben, especially, the thing in the original Fantastic Four movie stole the show, because mm. he was the most interesting character and in this one, he could have been, but they didn't use him. They, he, he was just kind of there. And I I felt like Johnny Storm, like all the actors, I felt like had the potential to be good for what they were given. I didn't have an issue with the acting at all, really. The problems that I was having was the lack of characters that they brought into the... Lack, what am I trying to say here? The lack of characterization they did with these characters like lack of personality yeah like they were all so bland yeah and they all had no real motivation for doing what they were doing sue storm actually is another one that bothered me because in the originals she was 
smart, like she was an incredibly smart woman, but she was also, the difference between her and Reed Richards is she had more warmth about her. Mm -hmm. She cared about people. She wanted to be there for people. And Reed Richards, it's not like he didn't like people, but he didn't know how to interact with people. Right. He was, he was too smart to be able to, yeah, he was too smart to be able to do that. And this one, they made Sue Storm just as awkward as him. And because he was already there and she just kind of was there to be somewhat of a flirty love interest. Mm Mm-hmm. They didn't give her enough to do to really shine. And she wasn't even there Mostly. when they got their powers. Right, yeah. Like, they all went to She just space, kind of walked into the room. <laughs> and she walked into the room and somehow got powers from that. So, yeah, I was really not a fan with this. I gave it a two, mainly to give the actors credit for trying for and, and best, being yeah. given this load of crap to work with. But, I mean, man, it just really was It was not good. Yeah, I, I also gave it a two for the same reason. You could tell that, that some of the actors... Um, we're trying, and I, I, I can't tell them. I, I can't tell you that this is like a passion project of any of these no. people. But I mean, they it, it did feel like they weren't just there for a paycheck. It did feel like they at least wanted to make a good movie, uh, and then they just failed on every possible, uh, like every possibility, every right. everything it could have done wrong, it did. And um, I just, I really feel like. It it kind of felt like like watching these these characters kind of felt like eating a bowl of just white rice with nothing in it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like it's like it got it got the, what you needed to get done done. Like you wanted to watch a movie, or you wanted to eat, but at what cost? Because <laughs> right. all you did was eat a bowl of white rice. That I don't. That's probably a bad analogy. I don't care. I'm sticking with it. It's a bowl <laughs> of white rice. It was just bland. It's so bland. Yeah. It's just like ours. But expensive. Guys, this is Ben. I know. So, he was lucky charm. I'm sorry, this is Borat. Borat's a dick. You guys sure you're in the best shape to be doing this? Oh, yeah. 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 We're good. All right, on an action level, I'm going to keep this short because there was no action in it. Yeah. It was, it was like... There were hints of when they could have done something cool a couple of times, and then they just didn't. Like, I remember when they sent Ben over to try to find Reed Richards, because they, well, they found out where he was, but they wanted Ben to bring him in, and it looked like he and he and Reed Richards were going to have a fight, and I was like, this could actually be interesting. Yeah, or at least and, any amount of conflict. Yeah, and then, like, it ended in two seconds. Like, I don't know if he got hit. I don't remember how it ended, no. but, it, like, they knocked him out somehow, and that was it. And, like, they maybe got one punch in. Like, it was just so... They they went for such a dramatic movie, or what they hoped would be a dramatic movie, that they forgot to make it a superhero movie. Yeah. Where there's actual heroics happening, or there's action of any kind happening. There wasn't... I, I, I remember searching as I was watching this movie, I'm like, there's no action. And then there wasn't the very final battle, where they were, like, trying to stop the portal from happening, but that didn't make any sense. Right. So, and at that point, I was like, I don't, I'm just so lost right now, I can't even give this point. Yeah. And I don't remember that action being all that interesting either. So, it was just, I gave it a zero, straight up zero. There just was not action in this movie. Right. So, with this with this particular uh, movie, I was a little bit more lenient. Um, for me, action is more than just, like, you know, fighting. But I will say, like, as an example, I, I enjoy watching a drama movie from time to time. But this movie isn't like a drama movie because there's no conflict at all. No. The the whole first like hour and a half of this hour and 40 minute movie is nothing. Mm-hmm. There's no conflict. The closest that they get to conflict is when they're building the portal. Reed Richards and, and Victor Von Doom have a little bit of conflict. Like there's a little bit like where they both are flirting with Sue Storm. Kind right? of. Kind yeah. of. Barely. But then they make, make up for it over a couple of beers, right? Right, yeah. And so, like, that just that gets solved by itself. And then there's a little bit of another conflict where Ben and Reed Richards... Reed Richards is kind of a kind of a fighting guy, it turns out, because he's the only conflict like we had in this he, movie. He, where Ben... Or he's irritating, yeah, at the very least. <laughs> yeah, well, so Ben was upset with Reed Richards for running off and leaving them all to be experimented on. Or and rightfully so. Yeah, and fair enough. And also, he dragged him into there, like, he didn't need to go to... Well, the and he said, I'm gonna fix this right before he ran away and proceeded not to do yeah, anything. Yeah, and then proceeded to not do that anything. That was another issue I had. Or it made him very unlikable, because yeah. he was like, I'm gonna fix this. And if he'd been, like, trying to work on a way to do that the whole time he'd been missing, that would have made somewhat of a resolution in my mind but the fact that he was literally just hiding made him very unlikely yeah anyway exactly so uh, i mean as far as that goes there's like 
hardly any conflict even. Mm-hmm. Like nothing you could even you could even call action. Right. Until the very last scene. And I even though a scene made no sense, I am gonna give it a point. Because watching Von Doom like kind of horror mode walk through the halls while lights get turned off and heads explode, kinda <laughs> sick. Kind of <laughs> kinda sick. Kinda takes you back a little because you're not expecting yeah. it at all. Right, because imagine watching the notebook minus all of the relationship drama, so it's just, you know, nothing I guess. <laughs> and uh and then at the end, heads start exploding, you know? Yeah, you're like, whoa, where did this come from? Right. So well, I guess what my point is, is uh, it was kind of tight. And it was kind of nice to have something to look at. Because the <laughs> whole movie, if you were staring at paint dry, it would have been just as interesting. Right. So, it, you know, I'm going to give it exactly 0.5 for... Uh, for heads exploding. For, yeah, for 0.5% of the people that I care about uh, being there still. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, this is where you've been hiding out. Wait, stop. Okay, let me explain. Why? I'm no good to you, to anyone. This is all my fault. That we can agree on. <laughs> Cinematically, this movie was awful. Um, I, I think I already mentioned that the CGI. Now, listen, <clears throat> when a movie is dated, I don't take points off for its CGI, mm-hmm. all right? Because they, they they did what they could, you know? <clears throat> this movie came out in 2015. The, the, CGI was fully in effect. I'm pretty sure that this movie came out around the same year as Star Wars The Force Awakens. Same year. The same year as The Force Awakens. And The Force Awakens, say what you will about The Force Awakens, it looks pretty good. Yeah. It looked pretty good. They knew how to do CGI by 2015. Mm-hmm. In fact, other movies that we've already reviewed had better a CGI. a lot better. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I honestly think that there are movies that were made in the 90s that looked better than this movie. Okay? Now, so visually, extremely unappealing. Okay? But the other thing, and I think that, uh, that, this, is, that this is just as important. Um, when you're talking about cinematics, you're also talking about writing. And uh, in... The thing is, is that we already docked a bunch of points from from uh, story for writing, but I feel like you got to dock a few more here because you know we talked about the bad pacing. Well, that's partly the mistake of the director, right? As well as the writing. I mean, <clears throat> you've got all kinds of mistakes made here that didn't need to be made, and I, I just feel like they could have done so much better. I am, however, <clears throat> a little bit. I'm going to forgive it just a little bit because the soundtrack was pleasant it wasn't like great but uh, those guys those guys were there to, to actually do a good job unlike anybody, it seems like else, anybody the else on the project so i did give the cinematics a one uh, just for the music <clears throat> and see for me i don't really have anything else to add to that because like ben said the cgi would look terrible reed richards was gross when he stretched <laughs> mm-hmm. and the way he like contorted his face to look different was really gross uh-huh. looking and and Ben looked about as fake as you can get, and mm. uh, Victor Von Doom looked terrible. The costume design was really bland too, because like in the I think in the comics and in the original ones they were wore, they were blue, right? Mm-hmm. That was their costume set. I think they swapped it for black in this one, or at least like a navy, or really like yeah. dark blue, and so it was like that's not as nearly as colorful, which I guess matches the tone of the movie because yeah. it was <laughs> really bleak and boring. Yeah. But they should have just made it beige. The whole yeah. movie. It's been a beige screen. Oh gosh. Yeah. So I gave, I gave the sin max a 0.5. I just think that it was really abysmal with what they did. And the transitions, like I said, every time it jumped, it was fade, 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 mm-hmm. fade. Yeah. They couldn't even get the transition. I know. Yet. I'm like, it honestly, it was reminiscent a little bit of Hulk 2003 oh. with the extent of like the transitions and the weird way of doing things. It wasn't that weird like Hulk was, um, but it was just really terribly done. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, you don't need to have a uh, iMovie effect for your transitions you can just cut to the next scene right i just you know just a little advice for all of you future directors out there (laughs) (laughs) oh man it's never my friends
On an entertainment scale, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, I I will say, having this being the one and only time I've ever seen it, I was almost I was almost enjoying how much I was disliking it. That was the one thing I can say about it. Is like there are some movies that are so bad that it's almost fun to watch the first time just to like see how bad it's gonna get. Yeah. And I think that that is about the best thing I can say about it on an entertainment scale. I think there's nothing interesting about it. It doesn't have a, enough of a s- actual narrative to like hook you in any way. There's no action sequences to make you have eye candy to eat popcorn to. Mm-hmm. The characters aren't interesting in any way. Um, yeah, it's really it, there's nothing about it that's entertaining other than just how bad it is, and, and you're watching this train wreck, right? And you're like, oh, this is this is horrible, but you can't keep your eyes off of it, right. you know? Yeah. So that's not a very good thing to say for an entertainment skill but it is something um because i do think if it was in that in that realm of like it's not completely terrible in all aspects but it is boring that's worse than having a really just terrible movie and that you could just like laugh at and point out all the flaws too so i gave it a 0.5 yeah so here's the deal On, on the scale of bad movies um, so this is this is how I this is how I rate movies, right? So let's say it's like an absolute value, right? You've got the y-axis here, and that's the quality of the movie. You've got the x-axis, which goes bad to good, right? What happens is it gets to a point where where before it's it's like like this right here. This is the middle, right? This is where you don't want to be because there's a point up here where it's so bad that it's good, or at least entertaining, right? Think mm-hmm. Batman and Robin, Batman Forever. Think uh, you know Superman three. Where you have, mm-hmm. or Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, right? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Where you've got something that's so bad that you can laugh at it, have a good time, you know, chuckle with your friends while it's playing, you know. Um, you know, you can you can make funny comments or something, whatever. And then the closer you get to good, it, it loses a lot of value. And then it starts to go up again on the good side. This is where the Dark Knight Rises sits, right? Uh, right yeah. here is where this movie is. It sucks. There's nothing here because mm-hmm. it, it's not bad enough to, to be like to be good. You don't have awful acting. Mm-hmm. You don't have ridiculous swipes and fades like you had in like you had in, in Hulk 2003. You don't have but you also don't have good acting and you certainly don't have good cinematics. You don't have uh, goofy music, but you also don't have great music. Mm-hmm. You're just stuck with nothing. It's it, it's like watching it's like Fantastic Four. No, I say it's Fantastic. Four. <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes exactly it's almost, like Fantastic it's like Four. It's like Fantastic Four 2015. <laughs> no, look, it's like the Fast and the Furious movies, but minus the car scenes that make it kind of enjoyable, right? Where it's like they had the budget to make it good, they had the actors to make it good, and they just didn't. So I gave it a zero because it's not entertaining. It's not entertaining on a bad sense or on a good sense. It's not goofy. It's not fun. It's not great. It doesn't. It doesn't make you shiver. It doesn't make you sit on the edge of the seat. It, it it barely keeps you awake. Honestly, I think if you were trying to fall asleep, this would be a good movie to turn on in the background. Probably. It's a zero. Okay, which brings my total to point seven, maybe my lowest of all time. Yeah, and my total was a point eight. So we got a total of point seven five together. Yeah. It's just. There, there's really nothing redeemable about this. And we're not telling any of you superhero fans anything you didn't already know. Yeah. <laughs> this movie this movie came out to abysmal uh, reviews, ratings. Nobody liked it. It was trying to set up for a sequel that never came because no one was going to pay to see a sequel. And they knew that. Well, honestly, if you paid to I, I paid to see this in theaters, and I want my money back. Yeah, like it's it's really, really, really bad. Do not waste your time if you've never seen it. Don't bother unless you want to rip on it, too. That's really the only reason you should watch it. And it's not worth ripping on. I would have rather have not watched this movie than made this video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've enjoyed ripping on it. <laughs> anyway, that is our take on Fan Four Stick Fantastic Four 2015. Uh, tune in next week, where we will be doing 2016 Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, which is a very controversial one for a lot of people, but I'm excited. I've only seen it once. So I'm excited to go back and revisit it. Also, I, I think uh, two more little notes that I wanted to make here. Um, I think that if they were to make four Fantastic Four movies, they should have kept the same title. <laughs> you know, you know, like they used to be like 
they put the, the, the letter, the number in with the letters. Uh-huh. Like when it was like the second or third of the movie. I think that they should have kept the same title. And then also I was hoping that at some point we could have made a, we could have made, you know how he ends it where he's like, he's like, that's fantastic. And he's like, say that again. But I was thinking, we could I forgot do, about I that. I think we should do it. I think we should do it. But we're like, it's really awful. Say that again. <laughs> anyway, tune in. Anyway, next week. thanks guys. <laughs> See you next time. This is the garage. Gotta say, it's fantastic. Say that again. It's fantastic. Yes, it is. Guys, I got it. Ready?